Across Yorkshire's moors and dales, the world's most famous vet set the benchmark for animal care. And James Herriot's legacy lives on. His former trainee, Peter Wright, oh, has been a Yorkshire vet for over 40 years. James Herriot used to take me out feeding cows. We used to get finished and pop in and have a cup of tea. Lovely. Peter's old partner, Julian Norton, Are you all right? With your big ears and your big attitude. Now runs two practices. Eking out the last few drops of goodness. One of them in the North Yorkshire town where Harriet lived and worked. There we go. We're going to have some fun. And in the foothills of the Pennines. Give it a welly hats it. A new generation of town and country vets. <laughs> Catch Dave. Also uphold the Harriet ethos. You get some of that, lad. What a champion, eh? Come on, vets. The teams are united. It's brilliant, isn't it? It is. How much left, guys? It's just over this next hill. By one common goal. Oh, it's massive. To help animals of all shapes. Why are we so bad at catching monkeys? Sizes. Blimey. Types. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and temperaments. Ah. Oh, you becker! It's definitely not glamorous. Sort of like popping a spot. But it's varied. You're going for a ride, lady. It's really easy. <laughs> Piggly, come on. <laughs> no, 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 no. But they continue the Harriet tradition. They're bonnie these Leicester lambs, aren't they? Treating all creatures <laughs> great. <laughs> We've got pals. Come on, there's your mum there. And small. The hens come to see me, which is very friendly. Yorkshire has inspired so many romantic poems and stories. Those wild, wuthering moors, standing hand in hand with the sweeping beauty of the dales. It's a land that sees relationships blossom, an ideal setting for soulmates. <laughs> He's a tiger, don't you go follow me. <laughs> I nearly fell. <laughs> I nearly toppled over. You did, didn't you? But it's not all peace and love. Give me your hand. What? There's hard work to do, battles to be won. And for Peter, Another challenging morning lies ahead at the practice in Kirby Moorside. And maybe once we're over there, does he? I think up against his table, I think. Local farmers Lee and Louise Thompson have just rushed in their ewe. This is um, a textile shearling that uh, can't get head engaged into its uh, birth canal, so um, looking for some assistance. <laughs> is she about on term? Yeah. I've put my hand in and I've got one lambing rope on. Right. I might be wrong, I think the lamb's probably dead, if I'm honest. Right. Well, we'll go straight in and have a look and see what's happening. It times of the essence. Yeah. There's just no space there. The problem with this, uh, this game is she's not opened up properly inside, <laughs> and it's going to be a big lamb with a big head. And, and so that combination doesn't work particularly well. So what I'm going to try and do, and it's not easy because we haven't the space there, I'm going to try and gradually work this rope over his head. With these jobs, you need a bit of patience, small hands and plenty of lubrication, don't you? Mm. I'm not optimistic that we're going to get this head through. I'm not optimistic at all. <laughs> I can't even open my hand out there, so I don't even want to get that head through. I think we're going to just... I think we're going to... C-section? Yeah. I didn't think, I think that. So. I think so. I'm, I hate to be defeatist, but I just know when things just aren't right. Mm. And I think we're better off. Do you think the lamb's alive yet, then? I, I'm not so sure. Mm. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that. 
there's a possibility that this lamb could be dead, but there's always that chance. And that's what we've got to cling to. Over at the practice in Thursk. Exposure is right, isn't it? Yeah. No. Julian and Fiona are dealing with an urgent case of their own. We've got a little dog in today called Lovejoy, and his owners are quite worried because they've noticed just this morning, really, he's been struggling to pass urine, straining, and no urine's coming out other than in small squirts. And it's suggestive that there's an obstruction either in the bladder or in the um, urethra from the bladder to the outside. So we're doing some x-rays. Lovejoy is the pride and joy of owners Andrew and Nick. It's perfect. He's very lively, yeah. loves the balls. Everybody in the village knows him. In the last few days, he's been snuggling in a lot more, trying to tell us something. The trouble is, you, because they can't speak to you, you have to wonder what, what you're looking for. And then we realised it was the... He wasn't weeing. Then we realised last night when we, we, got, we both took him out in the garden and said, that's it, we have to do something. So we've passed a catheter in there and I've actually injected some air into the bladder to highlight things in more detail. It's not the odd shaped bladder, it should be more like a pear and it's shaped a bit like a lemon, which is interesting. Um, yeah, it's quite clear there, isn't it? But here in the middle, there's, yeah. a, there's a collection of cluster of little stones. It can be quite a big problem, this. These stones will come out of the bladder in the stream of urine and then cause obstructions lower down the urinary tract, down in the penis, and that can be very painful. The worst situation is they'll get bigger and bigger and you can get a full-blown obstruction uh, resulting in potentially bladder rupture. We're going to need to operate and take these stones out of his bladder. Love joy, oh dear. We've done the x-rays under sedation, but obviously we need to give him a full anaesthetic to, um, to do the next part of the job. So, yeah, we're going to get him anaesthetised and then get him into theatre. Andrew and Nick know just how serious this is from painful experience. We had a previous dog called Leo. He was a Border Terrier and he had the same... He had other issues, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, but he, he was a bladder stance, what took him in the end. But hopefully we've caught it early this time. It was only four last Thursday, so we, we want him. We want him another ten years. Yes. Very, very upset. Yeah. Yeah. Is our is our world? Mm. Are we good to go? Yes. Steady. Coming up. I'm just hoping that we can get a live lamb out here. The moment of truth for the unborn lamb. This is the time we'll find out. And after bad news at the Greens farm. How's Sybil getting on without her? She's out to Sybil. She won't come. Peter's desperate to help. We can't leave you like this, can we? This is no good. Kirby Moorside, Peter's about to perform emergency surgery. We're just getting this girl ready to carry out a caesarean section. That lamb isn't going to come through and have a natural uh, birth, so we're just clipping her up now so that we can proceed. Farmers Lee and Louise rushed in the U this morning, and Lee isn't feeling optimistic. I think there's potentially a dead lamb, uh, in fairness. Hopefully, if we can save the ewe, even if the lamb's passed away, at least we've got the ewe saved her life, really, and not put her through a lot of uh, misery and pain, really. This will be a, a funny sensation for her, really. <laughs> I'm just hoping that we can get a live lamb out here. Let's hope. This is the time we'll find out. Work at him, Louise. Yeah. Not to swing him. Is he going? Is he going? 
Yeah, he's going, I think, Peter, yeah. That is the key with getting the animal here early. You can mess on for too long and then it all, it all goes in a disaster, doesn't it? Well, we'll be greedy. We'll have another one, eh? Oh, another one as well. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, he's the big brute, though. He's the brute. This is the fellow he's that's the, causing the problem. He's the one that's causing the bother. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got the rope on him. <laughs> that has surprised me. <laughs> it's almost like a Brucey bonus, isn't it? That it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> That's better. Yeah, two, two females, uh, two gimme lambs, yeah. Blaring for mum now. We won't have had a cesarean for 15 years. We've managed right? to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're breaking a record there, Peter, with this one. Well, it's not a very good one, is it? <laughs> not really, but no. <laughs> Go and see what all that noise is about. Good lads. Come on. Just steady. Anyway. It'll be up. That's it. This is just some painkiller for her. Right, missus. You'll get on with your work. Yeah. Oh, she's licking them now, look, you so she's... Yeah. Giving them a wash. There's a farm and all of it. Just to see a ewe there, with two live lambs, wanting to uh, get to the feet. It doesn't get any better, really. Wonderful. Yeah, it is. It's lovely to see that. Do you want to get the lambs, Louise? And we'll... Come on. There you go. Get on in there with your babies. There you go. Right, well, thank you very much. I'll check your hand. I like bloody, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you very much. Thank you very yeah. much for a, a good outcome. You're, well, and, uh, you're very welcome. Yeah. You always hope for a successful outcome. Sadly, it isn't always the case. But today has been uh, wonderful as far as I'm concerned. The mother's attentive. I'm sure she's going to be a good mother. So, really, from my point of view, it doesn't get much better. At the practice in Thursk. It's a little bit complicated. One of the hardest parts is making sure we get all the bits out. Julian and Fiona are in theatre with Lovejoy, who has life threatening bladder stones. I'm in the bladder now, and the stones form and develop initially crystals, and then the crystals get bigger and they uh, coalesce and eventually form stones. So it's not like stones from the garden path that have been swallowed that we might find in a, in a stomach. These are actually. Uh, ones that have formed over time. If there's one big single stone, that's much easier, but in this case, I'm fairly certain there's going to be quite a few little stones, so it's important to try and get them all out if we can. So that's the first one. And there'll be probably quite a lot more like that. They look tiny and they are quite small, but uh, if that's down the uh, urethra, it's going to cause a lot of problems, pain and irritation and obstruction as well. Would you be able to now catheterize his penis? Yes. We're just going to flush with some sterile saline just to get any stones that are stuck in the urethra back into the bladder and flush them all out. I'm ready, yeah, so blast away. Right, here we are. So look, it's, look at all these. Hard as you can, blast away. All these bits of grit here, this is what we've managed to flush out. There's loads of isn't there? Yeah. I mean, when you look there where it's all gone yeah. on, that's... There's loads yeah. of them, yeah. There's loads more in there. And it's very easy to miss these. And if you do, the whole surgery is for nothing. Mm. Can we do one more, just for good measure? Yeah and we'll flush the outside. Perfect. You can probably take the catheter out of your own. That's all clear now. So we're pretty much done with the bladder now. Just make sure there's nothing on the outside. That looks OK to me. Yeah, you happy with that? Yeah, that can go back in. Just like that. That's Lovejoy repaired. For Lovejoy's owners, Andrew and Nick, today's been hard. 
of their kitchen supplies. We, we start drinking orange squash, crying, and going through a whole roll of kitchen roll. <laughs> and that's all we've done. We just miss him. I can't tell you how much. Yeah, he's part of us, isn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There isn't better the best friend than the four-legged one in this world, ever. No? No. Hello, do you want to come and get yep. him? He's in the kennels, but... He's in the kennels. Love Joy, look who's here. Oh, baby. Oh, it's all right. Don't baby. jump out, mate. Wait a bit, my little darling. I know, I know. I know. I know, my little baby. I know. It's mm. all right, poor old boy. It's all right, darling. You're coming home. Oh, boy. Mm. You're coming home. It's all right, love, Joy. Oh, what a softy. What oh, a softy. Is. is he named after the TV? Yes, he is. We wondered about um, that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I did for a living, was antiques. Ah, right. He can just have a nice sleep by the fire or, you know, keep him warm and comfortable. You'll carry him. Yeah. He's got his blanket in the car and everything. Certainly well loved, that's for sure. Any problems, give us a shout. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye, love, bye. Joy. Oh, over the moon. Over the moon. Can't yeah. wait to get Can't him. Can't wait. Yeah. Snuggle up to him, watch some telly. Lots some love joy kisses. telly. Um, and kisses and cuddles. Um, get him back to full strength. He's obviously got some recovering to do from here, but uh, with any luck, that should be the uh, case closed for love joy. Jean and Steve Green might normally be a pair of cheerful old romantics, but at the moment, Peter's worried about them. They've had a pretty rough time recently. They've lost several of the cats, and uh, they've lost Mabel, the donkey. Now, I reckon these will make a nice addition to your farm. This one's called Mabel. I've got her. Come on, Mabel. Here we are. Are oh, you there? How are you? Hi, oh, Peter. Oh, Hi, Pete. How Sorry, are you? Lad. Oh my God. <laughs> are you? Are you doing all right? Not, Not too bad, much. lad. Mabel was quite a bit older than Sybil, a friend, and it's always very sad though um, when you lose them, even if it is through old age. These two are very close. How's Sybil getting on without her? She's yeah. out of jeans. Yeah. She won't come There's... later on, so you say to the one on us, you used to be a leader. Yes. And she used to follow him. So Mabel used to be in charge. Ah, she I did. wish she was the older one, wasn't she? Yeah. Let's go and have a look and see what she's, uh, see what she's looking this way. like. <laughs> Sybil! Come on, you old donkey. She's a bit shy of come here. Hello, dear. Hello, Sybil. Hello. How are you, Sybil? Hey. You've lost your friend, haven't you? Hey. You've lost your friend. You're looking quite sad, aren't you? Hey. You are. Poor little girl. Do a little bit of this. Oh, Sybil. This isn't like you. It isn't, is it? We can't leave you like this, can we? This is no good. Donkeys are very social animals. And, you know, she's come across to see me. I think she's lonely. I think she's fed up. Good girl. Me. Hey. Good girl. You desperately need a friend. Look, leave it with me. Trust me. I'm going to go and have a word with your mother now. She looks miserable, Steve, doesn't she? How she does. They're gonna touch the each other. Do. Let's go and have a word with boss. I've been to see Sybil. Yeah. And she's not on good form, is she? She's quite depressed. Oh yes, yeah, she's very depressed. It's sad to see her like that, really. Not I can do. I'm gonna put my thinking cap on and I'm gonna see what we can come up with. Well, can you help me? You're beyond hope, Mrs. Gray. I can't do anything oh, for you. you. She's a little devil. <laughs> How dare you? But I think I can help, help Sybil. Leave it with me. 
certainly Sybil can't carry on like this. I'm going to have to ask around and uh, have a few friends. They might be able to help, but uh, I'm going to see what I can do. Coming up. Oh, shit. Tricky surgery on a chameleon. Oh, I just wish this would stop. And Matt's definitely felt calmer. Whoa, crikey, Moses. Man, this is tense. Action stations at Shona's place, who gives her city slicker boyfriend Lamming 101. Give it a rub. I'm gonna squeeze down its nose. I put it right on the floor. Right, let us see it now. And for Julian, is it actually a happy birthday? <laughs> That's hilarious, thank you. <laughs> no, it's really hilarious. <laughs> on the edge of the North York Moors. Over the past two weeks, Lee and his son William have been keeping a close eye on their ewe, whose twins Peter delivered by emergency C-section. Afternoon, Peter. How are you? Good to see you. Now then. It's so William. Yeah. William. I'm interested to see how she's doing. Remarkably well. Oh, lovely. Remarkably well. And she's doing her lambs really, really well. Doing them well, isn't she? Yeah. Excellent. Um, yeah, she's happy, she's healthy. She's obviously producing <laughs> plenty of milk to keep them um, mm. to, to keep them going nicely. Because I mean look at the look at this one as well, look at the size of him. Right, we'll have them stitches out. I'll tell you what, she has she has good healing flesh. She, she's ailing well, hasn't she? Very nicely, yeah. I've kept an eye on it, there's never been a bit of infection or anything. Excellent. You've obviously done this job before. It's <laughs> not the first attempt. <laughs> not the first attempt, no. <laughs> no. Do you know, in some ways, I wish I could turn the clock back, you know. I suppose, you know, in your career of practice, you'll have seen a lot of changes. Farming's changed out of all recognition now. Yeah. And sadly, you know, you know, things have got bigger and bigger and bigger. And so it's lovely to see you starting out, Will, really. And um, it's, it isn't always... Bigger is better, either. No. When you have a fewer numbers like this, you take a greater pride in them. Mm. Mm. And, uh, you know, you get to know them all individually as animals, don't you? And I think it's lovely, really. We'll get these into the trailer and take them out, and uh, they can go and enjoy the sunshine. Very good. There you go. It's lovely, absolutely lovely, to see that uh, you looks a picture of health, and the lambs are really thriving. Go on, lass. Into trailer. Come on. She's coming. They look really, really well. They do, don't they? You're yeah. very proud of them, are you, Will? Yeah. Yeah. I've got to say, even after all these years of being a vet, just seeing these just run out into a field, especially in beautiful North Yorkshire on a day like this, the happiness on the faces when they're, yeah. when they're turned out. It's just the icing on the cake, as far as I'm concerned. Huddersfield vet Shona's delivered plenty of lambs during work hours. Right. Oh, yes. <laughs> there you go. But at home, with boyfriend James... I didn't grow up like this. I'm from a city background. Straight in at the deep end, yeah. She's been on a more personal adventure. Does this remind you of our first date, James? Yeah. The memories are flooding back from our first date, yeah. <laughs> Trying to breed their own white-faced woodland sheep. It's in lamb. <sighs> James will be learning how to lamb sheep this year. <laughs> it's now a waiting game on her busman's holiday. It's been quite a frustrating week so far. We both took two weeks off leave for the lambs to come. But now, now it's getting a bit tight to us going back to work and we want to make sure we've got all the lambs safely born and nice and healthy before we're not here full time. We're starting to get a bit sick of coming in here and seeing nothing happening. You do start to worry that there's something wrong. But just when it's starting to look like yet another frustrating morning... She did well to lamb that herself. Yeah, we're good. There you go. Give it a good rub. Get going. Hey. Sit, keep giving it a rub. I'm going to squeeze down its nose. Right, let's go pop this in one of our pens. Go near her and just show it to her and then just put it right on the floor. Right, let us see it now. So if you hold it like this, 
Can I get this one to her? Meh, meh, meh. And then kind of half drug it. Good lass. She wants the lamb, but she's backing off as soon as she realises that we're near it. We want you there, missus. Go on, Mum. That's a good lass. It's better. Oh, we've got a really cracking gimmer. So that's great. <laughs> good, isn't it? This little love. As they're on holiday, it'd be rude not to wet the baby's head. Oh, it's up, it's up. And someone fancies joining them for a drink. It's always a lovely sight to see a newborn lamb and a mum that wants the lamb and everyone healthy and happy. But it definitely is a little bit different because it's it's one of ours, isn't it? It's a bit it's more personalised when it's your own, isn't it? Yeah, when it's your first born, it's a bit different, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Very proud. <laughs> Just a few days later, Shona and James uh, you're welcome. are the proud parents to eight lambs. Come on, guys, don't hey guys. And they've taken their good life to a whole new level. So this is Margot. Uh, we've got Margot and Jerry, Barbara and Tom. <laughs> <laughs> we got a little bit carried away to start with. Barbara doesn't like cuddles as much as Margot. Margot's very insistent about a head scratch. Yeah. In a few months' time, we're going to regret this because she's going to be butting you for head scratches. We're going to come in the field and she'll be jumping on us. <laughs> More, please. <laughs> but it's really cute now. Hi, Maga. Cheeky monkey. You are going to be a nightmare when you're older. It's been absolutely fantastic to have the sheep from the very beginning, put them into lamb, and then actually see it through to fruition and actually have our own lambs running around the field. It's a fantastic experience. So the only problem is it's gone so well that James now thinks my job is really easy. <laughs> Don't see what all the fuss is about. <laughs> <laughs> He'll do me out of a job. <laughs> A few miles away at the hospital in Huddersfield, the pets come in all shapes and sizes. And Laura and Ben are worried about their little pal, Miss Pickles. We got advised from a friend of ours to get a chameleon and the great little creatures to have. She's supposed to pass eggs, but she's not being able to pass them. I'm worried, but hopefully. She'll be taken care of. Exotics enthusiast Matt knows just how serious a problem this is. What can happen is if those eggs stay in the body, they can go off, they can start to rot, and then they get what we call leg peritonitis, where they get an infection in the abdomen, and it is fatal, ultimately. So we put anaesthetic into her, into her arm. She's going to go to sleep. We're going to open her up, remove the ovaries, fingers crossed, simple as that. When incised into these guys, you've got to be really careful because they've got a big vessel that runs all along the length of the body here. So I've got to make sure that I go slightly off centre so as not to hit that. If I hit that vessel going in, it's game over. Ooh, that's a really good job we've gone in because all this white froth, that's the start of egg peritonitis, so it's starting to get horrible and nasty in there. These are some seriously big eggs. Look at that. Look at all of these here. Crikey, Moses. So, I think we've caught this just in time. I hope. I'm putting these stitches in to tie off the vessel so that I can safely remove all of these structures. But at the same time, trying not to lacerate any of the big blood vessels. Oh, shit. Oh, I just wish this blood had stopped. My big concern is that we've lost quite a bit of blood there. I mean, for a little tiny thing, that's a lot of blood to have lost. So, at this point in time, I, I am concerned as to whether we're going to pull through or not. At the practice in Weatherby... Oh, hi, Kim, it's Julian here. 
The team have a surprise for Julian. Uh, yeah, because Helen's on holiday, so... <laughs> ..who's reached the big 5-0. That's hilarious, thank you. <laughs> no, it's really hilarious. Where do you get a Zimmer blow-up Zimmer frame and a blow-up walking frame? Well, I'm sure that'd be extremely handy, thank you very much. <laughs> I don't feel 50 though, that's the thing. This will be more useful than a blow up Zimmer frame. Yeah, it will be. Yeah, this as well. Excellent. Cool, thank you very much. Can't beat that. <laughs> <laughs> jelly babies, always good. Jelly outfits. Jelly babies and. They're jelly outfits. Oh, jelly. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, cool. How cool is that? Shall we keep that here so it's my work mug? Yeah. yeah. Oh, is it. Um, it's a pinny. Um, pinny, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Old lives matter. <laughs> Excellent. I don't like to make a fuss about my birthdays, but it's been quite nice and uh, I'm, I'm quite touched. Oh, my badge, my badge, hang on. Even though I'm slightly traumatised now. This is the trouble, I can't bloody see anything. Here, <laughs> that's that's you Thank you. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> We thought we'd just take the mick out of him for being 50, even though I am one year older than I am. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> I was feeling really relaxed about being 50. Thank you, everybody. But now I'm kind of beginning to hit home that I am a bit of an old man. Oh, me back. Oh, me back. <laughs>
and hope for the best. Alive, that's good. I know, I know. Stressing out a little bit, yeah. But as soon as we've got this, we're on the home straight. One. 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 Woo! A lot of eggs. Right, oh man, literally, I'm like, the amount of sweat coming off me right now is high. With word spreading around the hospital about the egg drama, David's come to check on a fried mat. There we go. Sorted. Oh man, it's some hair raising. Oh, look at that, we're coming around quick. Perfect timing. Look at those. Perfect Ooh, timing. I thought it was like one or two. Of course, no. Look at that over here as well. That's a really nasty looking. I think it's, to be fair, looking at it, I think it's just discoloration. Yeah. <sighs> look at that. Good timing. This is coming around. <laughs> coming around. Hey. Relieved, definitely. You know, I've been under some tense surgeries, but that was certainly one of the more tense ones when we started to bleed there. But uh, thankfully, we got it stemmed and not too phased by the whole procedure. A few hours later, Miss Pickles' owner Laura is back to collect her. Go on through, Miss Adam. All right. There you go. And the only real concern is that she might just have forgotten her camouflage skills. She's a lot more active. <laughs> and um, colours, obviously, back, and her eyes as well, cos with her being dehydrated, her eyes were very sunken, so she seems a little bit more like herself. Miss Pickles has done unbelievably well. I'm staggered as to how strong that she's looking, given that it was a very touch-and-go procedure. Uh, so I'm absolutely over the moon to see her climbing so strongly onto her owner's head, so she should now make a full recovery. In Thursk... Good girl. Julian's combining pleasure with business. Well, it's a lovely sunny morning today, and I've got the morning off. Emmy and me have come for a walk. We're going to meet a patient called Lovejoy with his owners, Andy and Nick, who I've known for quite a long time. Are you a good boy? <laughs> Lovejoy had quite a big problem with his bladder. There were some stones there, and uh, interestingly, it was exactly the same problem that one of their previous dogs had. But unlike with Andrew and Nick's previous dog. You all right? Hi. Good morning. Oh, no, oh, morning. no. Lovejoy. I wanted a nice <laughs> welcome. not taking you away again. There's been no heartache over Lovejoy. He recovered from the operation OK? No problems? It's not really. Oh, no. yes. <laughs> the first day, first day or two, he, he sulked. Yeah. What have you done to me, sort of thing? But then after that, oh. he started to pick up. He's back to 100%. Good, good. Um, mm. He's, he's as lively as ever. It's good that he's done so well. He's found a new friend in Emmy. I've never seen a dog quite as excited by another dog, actually. They seem very happy. I think he's chasing after for all the wrong reasons, though. <laughs> yeah, I think he's thinking... A young lady to chase. Uh, he thinks he's me. got a new girlfriend, doesn't excuse he? Excuse me. <laughs> he I says, what's, what's wrong, I'm Daddy? <laughs> Go get her, Lovejoy, go get her. She's Look at that look. <laughs> She's going. Where's she gone, Lovejoy, look? I wonder whether he would, given time, follow her in, because he seems to want to follow her everywhere else. <laughs> He's thinking about it. Mm, look. Look, we've got a bit closer. Go on, Lovejoy, go well, on, we, you know well, you want to. I don't think he wants to get his feet wet, does no, he? No, he doesn't. Yay, you going? Oh, he's in. He's in. Hey. He's in. Good lad. What a brave dog. It's excellent. It it's really good. Lovely. Because um, Lovely. We, we, thought, we thought we were going to lose him, so we panicked. I think when Mr Lovejoy, we panicked that we don't want to live without him. <laughs> he's, he's only four. So he, uh, he's part of he's our family. One more, guys. We can't stay here all day as much as we'd like to. Emmy's found a new friend in Lovejoy, and it's really nice to see Lovejoy doing really, really well after his operation. Follow-ups at the clinic are quite common to make sure the surgery and the recovery's gone to plan, but to be able to get to go on a walk like this and uh, have some fun is even better, so uh, it's been a really nice morning. At 
at the Greens farm. Come on. Rob and Dave Nicholson have just arrived with Fernando. Should we let them touch noses over the door, do you think, Steve, or...? Probably be best. Yeah. After Peter told them about Sybil missing her old mate, Mabel. He's interested. Bit of a toy boy, I think. Yeah, well, I... She's, yeah. she's got a toy boy from Barnsley. <laughs> <laughs> I was at cross purposes there. I thought you meant Mrs. Green's getting a toy boy from Barnsley. Is he? Ah, no, I need a toy boy. Sybil. Mm -hmm. Look. Yeah. Look who's this. Mm -hmm. Look. Oh, good. That's it. They've got to initially go through a period where they've got to know each other. So the early signs are very promising. First meeting was great. I think it's pretty good. But you can't put them together yet. But give them time and they'll get together. Yeah. Looks good. They touched noses and it was an emotional moment. It was nice. Right. <laughs> we better bed them up for the night, son. Yeah. You can bed Sybil. Yeah. And I'll bed Fernando. That's it. Right, right. I'm ready when you are. Yeah, we're coming. I'm happy with him. I'm as happy as a sound man. He'll be happy in here. He's lovely. I like him. And I appreciate it, lads, and thank you very much. Loneliness in animals is an awful thing. And to think of a donkey on its own um, is really sad. And I cannot think of a better home than with Gene and Steve here in Thirsk living his best life. Gradually they'll be introduced and then uh, once they're bonded, then they'll be put together and they can live together, as the saying goes, happily ever after. And as the sun sets over Thirsk, there might just be something in the air tonight. Fernando takes no time to settle in. He's a great little donkey. We love him. He's good natured. <laughs> you would come and say, dear, yeah. Eh? I was born and we'd be in, we always had a donkey. Donkey people used to lend you one for winter for feeding it and looking after it. Oh, I've gone to school on a donkey. Come on, then, you old donks. On you donkeys! I think they're my favourite animals. Hey, look, he's rolling now. That's what he does. There they go. The Yorkshire Vet is back next Tuesday at 8. And that's not the only visit to Skeldale we pay next week. The new series of All Creatures Great and Small starts Thursday the 15th of September. Can't wait. Battling blizzard conditions for a spectacular hilltop view, the journey turns spiritual in the Pyrenees with Michael Portillo. Brand new next.